Hello there guys, welcome back to today's video. We're going to be looking at your feedback in this particular case. Again, now remember to fully power pen your work. Yeah, so full corrections. Okay, so even the multiple choice. Okay, so let's get ready. Now the first exercise in the matching exercise, now we know that Velocity is same thing as distance over time, so therefore it is meters per second, so therefore it's going to be this one here. Now force we know is Newton, power is watts, so we know this one already. Now moment is force multiplied by the distance, okay, so therefore we're going to force multiplied by distance, so therefore it's going to be Newton meter, and what's left behind is acceleration. Acceleration is the change of velocity over time so therefore we have meters per second per second so therefore meters per second squared good now this one here we have scalar and vector now we need to talk about these two now scalar so we need to say it only has magnitude okay now vector has both both magnitude plus direction okay so that's the difference the scalar only has magnitude and the other one got both so that's what we need to say now here we need one example of scalar so we have speed is one you got distance is another one you got time is one you got mass is one you got energy is one we have power we have density okay what else do we have temperature okay so all these things so you just need to pick one okay now the question about def different method of generating electricity now natural gas is burned so you're burning natural gas now same thing if you're being burning coal so let's say you have coal you're burning it so same thing here so here you have gas and you're burning gas so what energy name the energy that decreases when it's burning so what first of all do you know what energy is decreasing? You need to ask what energy is stored in the coal. So coal is chemical energy. So therefore the gas will also have chemical energy. So at home, whenever your parents are cooking something, whenever uh, the boiler is running, so you are using gas to heat up your house or to cook. So that is chemical energy. Okay, so chemical energy. So name the energy stored, chemical energy stored, or chemical energy in this particular case. Now burning natural gas and the movement of water can be both be used to generate electricity. So we can burn gas or we can use the movement of water. Now talk about the advantages and disadvantages of using these both methods. Now the way we're going to do that is we're going to do that as a table. So what we're going to have is we're going to have uh, let's say natural gas and then we're going to have let's say water movement okay and then we're going to create a table so we're going to have advantages and we're going to have disadvantages okay so this is a nice way to create it okay all right there we go there we go now four marks let's talk about this oops okay something crazy happened here okay let's zoom in now first first of all let's talk about the advantages of using natural gas now the thing is natural gas is easily available so everywhere nowadays everywhere you go in the UK there's gas stove uh, ev you know everywhere in your house even the boiler is gas to heat water up so pretty much uh, the advantage of natural gas in the UK is that it is reliable okay so everything in your life has been built to use natural gas so that's why you pay for electricity and you pay for gas so it is reliable okay now what is the disadvantages of using gas now the gas is a non renewable okay resource okay 
So it's non-renewable. So what does it mean if it's non-renewable? It means that eventually it's going to run out. Okay. Now, what else do we have? Okay. Now, burning gas produces carbon dioxide. Okay, which contributes to global warming. Okay, and that's how we damage. That's how you harm the environment because it produces CO2, and CO2 contributes to global warming in this particular case of greenhouse gases. Okay. Now, okay. Now, what do we have here? Water movement. Now, water movement. It's the advantage of water movement it is that it is water, so it is renewable. Okay, so it's renewable. So water, so it's always like r the rain cycle. So it rains, water is there, and so on and so forth. So it's renewable. So we can use it again and again and again. Okay, so pretty much reusable. So reusable. Okay. Now, the advantages of it is that it does not produce CO2. Okay? That's what's good about it. Now, what's bad about it? So we need to talk about what is bad about it. Now, since we're using water to move, so let's say water to move, uh, in this case, now the question is: Does the question say movement of water waves? Okay, so movement of water waves. Okay, so it could be in the ocean, blah blah. blah. Now waves, not every time you have waves, yeah. So it could be that sometimes the sea is just perfectly calm, or the lake is perfectly calm. Okay, so waves. Okay, might not. present all the times okay now what else can happen what else can happen now for you to make water waves for example let's say you're building a dam and then use the wave of the water so this is most likely wave of the water so wave of the water so wave of the water now you're building something that's a machine that's so next to the sea or next to the soul shore so what's happening is you are causing damage to the ecosystem of the fishes. The fishes or the fish. Okay. So what we're going to say we can say cause harm to sea life. Okay? Because if there's any sea living there okay any sea creature living there then you're building something there in this case you're putting something there in this case okay so these are the advantages and disadvantages now it's four marks so what we need so i think four marks i believe we need okay so one advantage for natural gas one advantage for water uh, waves one event one disadvantage for gas and one disadvantage for water waves all right so if you've got the correct disadvantages and disadvantages as you can see at one two three four you should be getting your four marks okay otherwise you will not be getting your marks in this particular case okay now what is the, is the advantages for natural gas okay now natural gas is it's readily available it's readily available so that's why i mean by reliable so it's already readily available always available in this particular case and then so everywhere it's all done we already have the technology for it so i can say already has tech to start using it Okay, so we already have the tech to use it. Okay, but the problem with renewable 
renewable energy resource, we need to make technology, we need to develop the technology. For example, solar system, okay? So back in the day, we didn't have that. So we had to invent it. Now, same thing with uh, windmill. So windmill, we had to invent it to use power wind. So even water wave, we need to find a machine that's able to use water wave to get energy from it, all of those things, compared to natural gas and burning fuels. Good. Now, this one, we should be able to know that. So human is able to hear. So we can hear between 20 to 20 kilohertz. So any thing that is in between this, we can hear it. So we can hear this, we can hear this, we can hear this, we can hear this. Now, we can't hear 10 because 10 is too low. We can't hear 25 K. We can't hear it because that's too high. Okay, so this is the range in this particular case. So this is the human range. So when you're marking your work, add this one first, and then you check your work. Okay, now what we have is we have pitch. So we have low pitch. So we need low pitch. So low pitch is equal to low frequency. Okay, now low frequency is equal to low number of waves. Okay. And then what we have is we have a quieter. So if it's quieter, it's going to have a small amplitude. So we need a wave that has a low number and a wave that is small amplitude. Now, small amplitude is easy. So I can have something like this, for example. Okay, so low number of waves. So I can have something like this. That's one. That's two. So that's one, and there we go. Okay, so the wave of dawn in purple, I have, so from here to here, that's one wave, and then I have a quarter wave, so I have one a quarter, so that is low number, and then small amplitude. So look, the amplitude. So this is the amplitude. Okay, so two marks. Good. Now this one you need to remember how to convert to Kelvin. So what we have is we have zero Kelvin is equal to minus two seven three degrees. Okay. So therefore now we're going to go backwards. We're going to go backwards. So degrees is equal to forty six and so we need to add we need to add two three to it. So this will give us Kelvin okay good now the lowest possible temperature is zero Kelvin so we can't go below zero Kelvin so okay and then we need to use the equation so therefore speed is equal to 0 0.6 this times this plus this this will give us 360 360 there okay and then here we need to find, so wave speed is equal to frequency time wavelength. We're looking for wavelength. Wavelength is equal to speed over frequency. Speed we know 360 over 15,000. This will give us a wavelength of this much. Okay, three marks, good. Now this is a very nice question, specific capacity, so this is a required practical, so this is a required practical, so required practical. Now the required, so find a method to work out the specific capacity. Now first of all, we're going to risk down the equation for specific capacity. So energy is equal to mass times specific capacity times change energy. So we've got energy, the mass, specific capacity, change temperature okay now since we're looking for specific capacity we're looking for c is equal to energy over mass this one here now first of all what do we need let's start with the easiest one so we need to find the mass of this okay so first of all first bullet point find mass using a balance so we need to use a balance in this particular case okay Okay, so using the balance, we need to use a balance. Good. Now that's how we're going to find the mass. Okay. Now, what else can we have? So look at that. So we got the thermometer here. We 
we got the concrete, of course, we got the heating element. So this is going to heat up first. So this is going to heat up first. And then once it's heated up first, all that heat, all that energy will go into the block. Insulated material and so on. Okay. Good. Now, what else do we need? Okay. So we need to measure the temperature measure starting temperature starting temperature of the concrete now how do we measure this we have a thermometer okay that's what we do so record the temperature thermometer okay all right and then what we need to do okay so we need to switch on so this will supply energy to the concrete okay and then so we've a stopwatch okay wait 15 minutes Record final temperature of concrete. Okay, so what? So here we go. First of all, you find the mass using this balance, and then you measure the starting temperature with the thermometer, and then you switch everything on. This up supply energy to the concrete with a stopwatch. Wait 15 minutes, and record the final temperature of the block. Okay, and then find change in temperature. So find the change in temperature. Okay, good. Right. So using energy is equal to power multiplied by time. Now power, we know that power is IV multiplied by time. Okay, so get I from a meter and V from volmeter. Okay, so this will give you the energy, and then I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna go to have space somewhere. Okay, let me just go back up then. So from here, let's go up. Go up. Go up here. Okay. Okay. And then we say using equation put values in to Calculate C. Okay, because the mass we know is here. Initial temperature we know is here. Energy supply we know is here. Okay, final temperature we know is here. So we can find the change in temperature already. Okay, time we know is here. So we can use the equation here and it's done. Okay, so just like we did the required practical, so these are the methods to work out the specific capacity. So you always start with the equation and then work backwards. So what do you have? You need energy. Yes. How do you get? How do you find energy? You know the equation. So what do you need? Here we go. Mass. How do you find the mass? We need the balance. Okay, balance or so scale. Change in temperature. How do we get change in temperature? We need to measure the starting temperature with what? With thermometer. Okay. So we need to stay awake. Now here we go. Advantage. High specific heat capacity. Okay. Now, if something has a high specific 
heat capacity. What does it tell us? Okay, now let's, use, let's look at the equation. So equation C is equal to E over M delta theta. Okay, now if C is going up, it means that the energy is high. Okay, so this tells us it's going to take a huge amount of energy. Okay, it's going to take a huge amount of energy. So it's going to, for you to heat it up, it's going to take a huge amount of energy. Okay, so take huge amount of energy to heat up. Okay, therefore, the concrete. So if it takes a lot, a huge amount of energy to heat up, it means that it it's gonna store that energy into it. So concrete can. absorb lot of energy okay now if the energy is high so we know that energy again so let's have a look here okay so we know that energy is equal to power times time so if energy is going up it means the time is going to go up as well so therefore it means that it's going to take longer to heat it up it's also going to take longer for it to drop down okay so take takes longer to heat up but takes longer to cool down so that is good so therefore so it means that it's gonna retain the energy for a long period of time because it takes longer to heat it up, so therefore it's going to take longer to cool down. So therefore, we can use the concrete to heat it up. So here, let's have a look. So where's the diagram? So concrete and then the tube. I think we have tube on top of it, isn't it? Okay, yeah. So we have concrete here. And then we've got the tube of water running through it. Now, if the... N if the concrete take a take huge amount of energy to heat up so it's going to take longer to heat up okay but it's going to take longer to cool down and then we know it's going to take a huge amount of energy so it's going to have so much heat energy in it okay and then it's going to hold that energy for a long period of time and then it's going to lose that energy long longer it's going to lose the energy long time so therefore you can continuously heat up the water of a long period of time because it has huge amount of energy because first of all, it takes a huge amount of energy to heat it up. So therefore, it can store, so it can absorb or store a lot of energy and also going to take a long time to cool down. Okay. So let's say this is the tube. This is the concrete. Okay, so that's what it means to have a high specific capacity. Now, we did talk, I, I remember did talk about this, I think, uh, last year. Okay, now this one is straightforward. So we've got weight, so weight is equal to mass times gravity. So we're looking for mass is equal to weight for gravity. Weight is 0 0.16 over 10. So this is 0 0.016 kilogram. Now the answer are in grams. So therefore, I need to turn this into grams. So how do I do this? So multiply by 1,000. So 1, 2, 3. So therefore, this gives me 16 here. So the answer is this one here. Okay, because look, all the answers are in grams. So therefore, my answer, I need to be in grams as well. Now, this is a moment. Now, the question says it's force multiplied by perpendicular distance from the pivot. So the force is this one. So that's the force. So where is the perpendicular distance to that force? So therefore, the perpendicular distance is this one here. So therefore, it's going to be 0 0.16 times 3 point this. And now... I need to check. Do I need to convert? Do I need to convert? Cent look, centimeters. Do I need to convert? No. Look, because it is in centimeters. So this will give me 0 0.592. Okay. Okay. Now, next question. State the moment of force F. Now, first of all, where's F? 
f is here what is the moment of force f so now the question says state state and it's one mark so therefore the answer must be the same here we go because look state it is st and one mark here you go down now this one here we need to use the principle of moment so what does the principle moment tell us now the principle moment tell us that the total anti clockwise moment is equal to the total clockwise moment so f times d must equal to f times d anti-clockwise and clockwise now anti-clockwise we know how does anti-clockwise look anti-clockwise look like this it's going to go the other way okay clockwise is going just like the clock now let's identify which one which force which f is clockwise and anti-clockwise okay let's take a look so we've got the pivot here so everything's going to turn around the pivot now this force here is going to go down it's going to go down so like this okay okay so therefore this here 0 0.16 is anti-clockwise so therefore it's going to be 0 0.16 times 3.7 equal to now which one is the clockwise which one's clockwise again let me delete this okay let me just delete this okay clockwise is the other way so this is the force okay so the force is here if i zoom out a little bit the force here so therefore what is clockwise so clockwise is like this so this is clockwise like this isn't it so therefore f is clockwise how far is f so f is 7.4 from the pivot yeah if look look at the equation from the pivot so therefore it's going to be f multiplied by 7.4 now this one we know so this is 0 0.592 equal to f times 7.4 so therefore I'm going to have 0 0.592 divided by 7.4 is equal to f okay and f therefore is 0 0.08 Newton so this is how we show in this case now the reason why it's two marks is because we have already worked this out so this here is already worked we already worked these out so we already work out the anti-clockwise moment so this here so this is actually the anti clockwise moment that's okay so we already worked this out so now we just need to uh, add the clockwise moment and then we're done okay now this is spring now this one is the easy question spring find the original length so we know that extension is final takeaway original now everyone got this one correct so 14.6 take away this much so everyone got this one correct there was no problem there at all okay now here the student removed the mass and notices that the, it does not show elastic behavior okay so it means that it does not go back to original length so here predict what value what's going to happen so the original one let's say this is the original one so the original length is 3.1 and then so when we put the weight on it it goes to 14.6 isn't it after the length of this one measures the extension of this okay that's fine okay so the new the new length is this one now when so this is the weight on it let me just draw this here okay now when the student removes the weight so the string goes back something like this there we go so predict what's going to happen so any value so any value between 3.1 to 14.6 is correct so any value between so I put the range here so 3.1 to 14.6 is correct okay so for this sake I'm just gonna go for yeah so it doesn't matter which value you go 
So for example, you can say four, four is correct. You can say 10, it's correct, 14 is correct, and so on and so forth, yeah? Okay, so as long as, because when we remove the mass, it goes up a little bit, okay? So it doesn't matter. So I'll just put, let me just put 14 here, that's it. But any value between this range. Good, here we go. Now, you take the mass, you put it down, and then the mass are going up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay. Okay. So this is how it's going to look like. Look, the object goes up, goes down. Goes, so it goes down, stop, goes up, all the way up, stop, goes down, all the way down, stop, goes all the way up, stop. Okay. Now, this is what it looks like. Okay, so it goes all the way down, here, goes up, goes here, goes down, goes here, goes up. Okay, now the question says how the gradient, how does the gradient shows that the masses accelerate as they vibrate? Okay, now first of all, what's on the y-axis? So first of all, y-axis equal to distance. x-axis equal to time. So the gradient gives us speed. Okay, so the gradient actually gives us the speed, which is the change y over change in x. Yeah? Give us speed. There you go. Okay. Now, what is happening to the speed on the graph? Look, the graph here is negative positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. Okay? What did it show us? What did it show us? Now this showed us that the speed is not constant. Okay? It is changing. So what we have is we have so this we lead to so leads to change in speed over time. And we know that change in speed over time leads to acceleration. Okay? Now, some of you may talk about changing direction, which is good as well. Okay? So it is not constant, it's changing, let's say, it's changing direction. Therefore, leads to, leads, this leads to velocity changing. And see, if our velocity changes, therefore we're going to have acceleration. Because acceleration is equal to change in velocity over time. Okay, so that's what we need to talk about. Now, point X to show all the time where it's not moving. Now, let me look at the gift again. Let me show you the gift. Well, gift. Now, where is it not st stopping? Look. Down. Stop. Goes up. All the way up, stop, goes down. So every time it is at the start, so every time it is extended, it stopped, and then it reverses, and every time it is already squeezed, it stopped, and then it reverses. So it means that it is it stopped moving when it reached the extremes. So it means that every time it reached extremes, it stops. So here, it stopped. Here, it stop, reverses, stop, reverses, stop, reverses, stop, reverses, stop, reverses. So every time it reaches this point, okay, so for here, so here it's like this. It stopped, and then it goes down, and then when it goes down here, so that's when it is extended here, and then it goes up. So here again, it's squeezed together, and then it goes down, so it goes down, so like this, and then it goes up, and like this. So at these points, that's where it's not moving because they had to stop before it changes direction. Okay, so these points are one, two, three, four, five, six, six points. Okay, good. Now let's take a look at this one here. Object blah 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 blah. blah. Okay, so what happened? Now, if you remember the graph, it's a velocity time graph. Now, when you drop something, it accelerates, and what happened? It start to slow down, slow down, slow down, and then you get flat. So what happened? 
So accelerate, and then slows down. Now, if it's slowing down, what's happening? If it's slowing down, it means that it is decelerating. Decelerate. And then, terminal velocity. So which of these options line up with this? So it's not this one, it's not this one. So this one's saying decelerating acceleration and then move to terminal velocity. This one's saying acceleration, then move to the terminal velocity. Now, terminal velocity is here. If you go backwards, we've got deceleration, so therefore that's the answer. Now, if you're marking your work, I need you to see this here. So add this. Okay. Now, this one's straightforward. Now, uh, kilometers. Okay. Now, this is in hours, so we need to be careful there. So let's take a look. Distance equal to speed time time. Uh, speed is what? 60 kilometer per hour uh, times time. Time is 15 minutes. Okay, now we need 15 minutes in hour. So we need this in hours. So I need this to be the same. So I'll divide this by 60. Okay, and this will give me... Fifteen kilometers. So make sure that you have the working out there. Okay. Now density. Okay. So we know that density is equal to mass over volume. The mass of the air is this. Now the volume of the room. You know how to work out the volume of a room. So the room is a cube. How do we work out the volume of the cube? So length times width times height. Okay. So this is, oh sorry, we're looking for my bad, okay? I, I, I actually spotted my mistake there. So we're looking for mass. So mass, uh, mass is density times volume. So density is 1.2 times five times four times three, okay? Seventy-two. That's the answer. Okay. Now this is circular motion. So this is circular motion. So circular motion. Okay. Now circular motion. What we have is we have something called the centripetal force. Now the centripetal force is it is the resultant force acting towards the center okay that is what's keeping object going around now if my car is going around there must be something that is pointing inside that's keeping it going around so the answer is b again so when one of you when you're publishing your work i need to see this statement there okay good equilibrium now equilibrium means forces is equal to balance now is forces or balance it means that the resultant force the resultant force is equal to zero so therefore it's going to be what it's going to be this one here again so make sure that you have this statement written down okay okay the car is moving and then apply the brake stop. Now, in which form is the kinetic energy gone? Now, brakes uses friction. So therefore, we have heat. So therefore, the answer is C, thermal. Okay, because you need heat, you need friction. So you need heat, in this case, friction. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Now let's take what we've got. So we are so here we have the ground. We can have do I have a space for a diagram? Let me zoom in. There we go. So that's the ground. So we're going up the ground. 15 meters. Okay. Good. Now work is energy. Now if we are going up, okay, so if we're going up, so what's that? That's gravitational potential energy. So you can actually use the equation for gravitational potential energy. M G H M is this. Now there's 20 of them, so we need to multiply by 20 times gravity is 10 times 15. Okay. Joules. Okay. 
good. Now the car is moving along a straight line. In case you list your car here. It's moving along a straight line. Now the kinetic energy, so it's KE, we know. Okay, and the car accelerates for this many seconds until the kinetic energy increases up. Okay, so energy goes up. Now, what is the minimum power developed by the car in this particular case for this acceleration? Okay, now what is the minimum power developed? Okay, so the car is going at kinetic energy is 16 megajoules and then it accelerates, boom, 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 it goes to 2 point this. So what is the power generated? So how much energy are we adding in it so that it can accelerate? So therefore, we need to find the difference. Different is 2.5, take away 6. Okay, so 2.5, take away 6. This is 0 0.9 megajoules. Okay, now we're looking for power. So power is energy over time, so 0 0.9. Now megajoule is times 10 to the power 6 divided by time, 20 seconds. So this will give me 20 seconds, this will give me 4 to 5, 1, 2, 3, 1. So therefore the answer is C in this case. Okay, so I need to see your answer in this case, yeah? All right, now this one, we have bubble of gas. So this is definite question, so look. So bubble gas, the bubble has a volume of this, so this is V1. Uh, the pressure inside this is so P, so this is P1. Now the rises up through the water, the volume increased to this, so this is V2. And the pressure becomes this, this is P2, so therefore work out this one. So therefore, P1, V1 equal to P2. V2, I'm looking for P1, so P1 is equal to pressure 2 times volume 2, divided by volume 1, so equal to uh, 1,000 times uh, this one. So this is kilo, yeah? So this is kilo there. So look, kilopascal. So divided by 40. Okay, so 100 times this divided by this. This will give me 140 kilopascal. And that is the answer here. Okay, now this one is a straightforward question. So you can, what can you do? You can actually flip your paper and see. See from back. Okay. All right. So if you got this wrong, you need to wake up. Okay. And then we are done. All right. So now you should know where you messed up and what you can do to make sure that you fix yourself for the future. Okay, so any questions, equations, understanding what's happening in this case, and so on and so forth, yeah? The more you practice, the better you're going to get at it. Again, so if you're not sure about anything, you let me know. There's those of YouTube videos, uh, even in Google Classroom. If you look at the imported notes, I've put a lot of uh, the resources there, YouTube videos, resources to help you out in this case, okay? All right. All right, stay alive.